Hey friends, welcome to Load of Crock. So I found a 13 pound pork shoulder in my freezer and I thought, let's make a 13 pound pork shoulder. So in this edition, I'm going to show you how to do a really simple rub on this pork shoulder that is fantastic. But then I thought we could get a little bit crazy and do what I'm going to call a choose your own adventure load of crock. I don't know if you remember those books from growing up, the ones where you'd read and then get to decide which way you would go in the story. And well, for me, they always felt like math equations because I always chose wrong. But this is foolproof, no wrong way to go. I'm gonna provide you with the simple rub. And then in addition to that, I'm going to include two other recipes of ways to then eat and cook the meat each of them only requiring two to three more ingredients. So everything's super simple. You can either make one large meal or break it up into two or three because, well, we are talking about a 13 pound pork shoulder. So get ready to choose your own pork adventure. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the choose your own adventure edition of Load of Crock. So as I shared, what I'm going to be showing you here shortly is how to prepare the pork shoulder with a really simple rub. There are only nine spices that are included in this rub. And I know what you're thinking, wow, she is terrible at math. She wasn't lying. Nine is a high number. I agree, nine is a high number, but as I like to do with a lot of my recipes, I try to find ones that have things that you might already have in your kitchen, and I'm hopeful that you may already have most, if not all of these spices in your spice rack. So I'm gonna show you how to prepare the pork shoulder this way, and it can be eaten just this way. I've had it and it is fantastic. But the choose your own adventure will come in after this, where I'm going to then share a way to prepare it with only two other ingredients as a barbecue pork, and then with three other ingredients as carnitas. Now, for those of you that maybe watch through the crock pot prep and then stop watching, I just wanna let you know, at the end of every video, we show you the final product. And if in any episode, I think that it's really important for you to stick through to the end to see the final product, I think it's this one because it could be really instrumental in which adventure you choose. For the rub in a bowl, add one tablespoon of sea salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of onion flakes, one tablespoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of cumin, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mix all of the spices up together really well and set aside. In a separate pan, add your shoulder and put the rub on one side, rubbing in very well, and then flip the shoulder over and add the rest of the rub, again, rubbing in really well. Get out your crock pot, spray the sides and the bottom, and then you'll want to place the shoulder with all of the rub in the crock pot. All right, so the pork shoulder is in the crock pot and ready to go. Assuming you did a 10 to 14 pound shoulder, you'll want to either do it on low for 11 to 12 hours or on high for eight to nine hours. And the pork shoulder creates a ton of juice on its own while it's being cooked. So if you were like me, I was a little bit leery that there were no juices to be added, but trust me, it will create enough juice as it's cooking. It's fantastic. So that is option number one of choose your own adventure. Once it's done, you shred it up, you can serve it as a sandwich, you can eat it by itself, and it is wonderful. Or option number two, you can shred it up and then you can add barbecue sauce and brown sugar to create a pulled pork barbecue that can be eaten as a sandwich or on its own. If you wanna get a little bit crazy, you could add a little bit of beer to that too. Option number three, carnitas. What you would add for carnitas would be a little bit of orange juice, some lime juice, and chicken broth, and you would mix that all up. Some people like to then put it on the stove top, cook it on the stove to crisp up the meat a little bit before serving. A lot of people with carnitas will serve them with taco, um, oftentimes soft shells, and that is a fantastic way to eat it as a carnita meat. So these are your three choose your own adventure options. 
All of these recipes are included in the summary description on my YouTube page. So please feel free to read through that so that you can grab all three of these so you can choose the best adventure for you. Thanks to everyone who continues to watch and subscribe to my Load of Crock channel. I really appreciate all of you. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to do so. And you can sign up for alerts as well so that you are alerted every time we post a new video and recipe. Now, as promised, for all of you that stuck through it to the end, we're about to show you the choose your own adventure options. And the best part is you don't have to be a mathematician. You just need to know that X plus Y equals a happy belly. Mm -hmm.